Hi, I'm Elite Painter Master Karen Boniker. This new brush category for painter and painter essentials is called Sunny Rays, and it's about light, whether it's direct sunlight or light or from other sources such as fog and mists. There are three distinct systems of light illumination. There's the sun itself, the blue sky, and the reflected light from illuminated objects. The second two sources of light are derived entirely from the first and should always be subordinate to it. It is no wonder that light is what makes our paintings come alive. In this new brush category, let's take a look at some of these new brushes and discover some of the best ways to utilize them in your painting process. When I open up a new category of brushes and painter, I'm always excited to try them and to see how they can work into my particular workflow. I never take a brush at face value. Instead, I look at how I can change it and make it work for the paintings I'm developing. There may be a brush that I can use to create the looks of mists or to create an atmosphere. And I'm always looking for these kinds of brushes and painter. So let's begin with the first brush, which is called Alpen Glow. Alpen Glow was created to evoke a feeling of light and atmosphere. Alpen Glow is something that you experience in a sunset where the sun's rays are at a low position on the horizon and the light is reflecting off of the granite cliffs or mountains. Another way to use it is to evoke the feeling of mists or atmospheric conditions, such as this painting with the couple walking along the beach. With all these brushes, it's important to remember that you can use some of the particle common controls to change the look and the shape or even the size of the brush. With all these brushes, it's important to remember that you can use some of the particles common controls to change the look, the shape, the size, and the direction of the brush stroke. For example, if you wanted to create a brush stroke that is starting in one corner and ending in another, you can set the direction option to 120 degrees. And let's just go ahead and do that. We have the particles common panel open and it can be opened directly from the property bar by selecting flow particles and choosing particle commons. Now in the direction option we're going to just go ahead and highlight this and change it to 120 and then select enter and you can see now that our direction has changed. Now I've added a new layer and set that layer to overlay blend mode. I've chose a nice gold color here that I'm going to work with and I want that brush stroke to lay over the top of the couple here. Now what I'm going to do is set the opacity to 100% because I want you to see what happens with the brush and as I start to lay in this brush stroke. And so you can see that it comes in pretty strong, but it is very focused and starting up in this upper left corner and ending down in the right. However, I can come over now and change the opacity on that layer and just subdue it somewhat. So I'm still capturing that light within the image, but it's a more subtle look. In this painting, I want to evoke that feeling, that real feeling of Alpen Glow. And this is a mountain scene where I've gone ahead again and added an overlay blend mode and uh, I have the opacity at 100%. I also have the direction set to 120 so I can really focus the light. Um, and what, I'm, what I wanted to do here was to, again, give that feeling of glow coming onto the mountains and then directly down onto the trees. So you can see how I'm able to really focus the light here. When I take the brush back to its default setting, which I'm going to select here, the Reset tool, I can go ahead and add 
other touches of light throughout the painting. And again, remember that I can control this opacity and the look of light with the opacity slider. And don't uh, forget that you can use other composite methods too. So you may want to cycle through some of these and decide how best a particular composite method works with the painting to achieve the effect that you're after. The next brush we're going to look at is called Balmy. And you'll notice that I've gone ahead and added a new layer because again, this is a term that we call working non-destructively that gives us that option to work with composite methods, to work with opacity, and if we don't like it, we can simply delete it and start over again. Now, Balmy is a brush that adds a feeling of, um, for example, if you wanted to create the look of distance or uh, the feeling of mists. So I'm going to pick up kind of a gray color here and I'm using my Alt key to kind of sample through the colors and until I find something I like and I'll go just a little bit lighter uh, on the value of that. And say for example I want to just pull in a little bit of that feeling of mists right in this area here. Now if again if I don't like it or if I feel it's a little too bright I can go ahead and bring the opacity down and uh, subdue it a bit. Remember also that if you like working with um, uh, layer masks, you can add a layer mask and simply work with black to remove some of the effect. So let me show you how you would do that by selecting a new layer mask, working with the color black to conceal, and then when I start to work over those areas, you can see that I can soften them and get them just to the point where I really like what I see. The next brush we're going to look at is called Blazing. And Blazing is a brush where you'll really want to have fun with it and especially work on a layer so you can control, again, the opacity. Um, I'm looking for something real bright here, so I may go to more of these gold colors and a, a nice saturated color here. And we'll bring the value up a little bit and the saturation up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is play with this brush first and kind of show you the effect that, it, uh, that you derive from it. Let me backspace out. I'm going to start in the lower corner and notice that I'm actually starting my brush stroke well outside of the painting. And I do that because I want a very continual stroke or uh, I want that brush to cover the whole painting but I want to give it the effect that I'm looking for as well. Here would be another option where you can control the effect by bringing the opacity down and you'll notice that you create kind of that look of haze, uh, lots of light reflection but definitely a good one for overlay as well because you really change the whole atmosphere of the painting by bringing out the lightness and the brightness. So do experiment there with a blazing brush. The next brush is called Foggy and uh, this one would be great if you're trying to create that look of fog coming in on a, on a uh, perhaps a seascape or even if you want to show uh, lower clouds and fog approaching. And I'm going to pick up this nice color again. I'm working on a layer and I'm going to just softly subdue some of these areas and uh, just kind of give that feeling of mist and fog coming in. And working very, very soft, very soft brush stroke maybe even pulling in some lower fog look across this area in here. And again, I can control that effect by lowering the opacity. And again, don't forget to apply uh, different blend modes. Screen works very well for this um, and is one of the go-to uh, composite methods that I use quite often. So screen would be good here 
overlay would be another option that you could play with and then of course work with the opacity much much more of a subtle effect on this brush the hazy brush is the next brush we're taking a look at and this one is a brush that you will want to use to create the feeling of atmospheric conditions such as dust and particles uh, within the atmosphere. So you really have to uh, continue to kind of brush over areas to achieve the effect. And let me zoom in a little bit closer here so you can actually see this as it starts to come in. And I have set have it set to overlay blend mode as well. Um, but of course you can always change it to default and you get a different kind of look here as it starts to build in. And again, you can control the look or the effect uh, with the opacity slider. And remember that uh, the layer mask will work well here to remove areas where you don't want that effect to come through. The next brush we're taking a look at is called Magical. And Magical is a really uh, fun brush to use. Um, you can uh, uh, use it in some ways where you can create some, some just some interesting uh, brush strokes and effects. Um, definitely one that you might want to use with, uh, you know, light. And it just kind of adds a special kind of um, magical touch. I've actually used it as well for um, ripples in water. Um, I'm going to sample this color down here and you can see that I could you know kind of use it to show the little reflections of water or that feeling of waves or ripples in the water. So those are a couple of ways that you can use it. But there's nothing like just getting creative with these brushes and finding unique and creative ways of using them. The next brush is called Misty, and um, when I was looking at this painting, I wanted to push uh, this area back where the little uh, structures are, and again, working on a layer, um, I was able to just softly float in this mist across the top of them, which pushes them back into the distance a bit and increases that feeling of atmosphere in the painting. The next brush is called Radiant. And this brush is one that uh, you can use with the uh, particle shine option, which works very well with really dark backgrounds. Um, I'm using it here. Um, and what it does is it just shines these really nice little effects of light. So you might want to use it as light breaking through clouds or, um, uh, you know, lots of different options that you can use. Just more reflective light or just giving a painting that extra something that it might be missing. Uh, these were, this is where these brushes really come into play. So you can have a lot of fun with um, the different uh, effects that you can get with this brush. And it's very random, although again you can use that uh, direction option on your uh, particle common panel to control the direction of the brush. So kind of an effect type of brush, but really you can have a lot of fun with this one. This brush is called Rays and it's again one of my favorite brushes. Bring the size of the painting down a little bit. And again this is an area that I might want to change the complete look of the painting. Um, again, I would probably change my composite method to overlay here and work with a 100% to start with. I'm looking to uh, maybe pick up a light pink color and again this brush you'll want to start at the top of the painting and then let it flow through. And again you can see how it changes the overall appearance of the painting in terms of value, giving it a much brighter effect. Um, I can control that effect again with the opacity slider and using the uh, flow particles and the 
common panel and changing the direction I can work with that brush as well. So these are some of the great ways that you can work with the raise brush. The next brush we're going to look at is called showers and it is obvious it's a brush for creating the look of showers in the distance. Um, I tend to work with this brush on a layer so I've gone ahead and added a layer and um, I'm going to sample some color here um, you know based upon you know the color that I'm looking for for those uh, showers and I really want a very distant look of showers so I'm going to pick up this color here it's a little bit uh, on the gray side and go to my brush and then I'm just going to float in this nice soft shower coming across the bottom of this cloud and you'll notice again that um, you know, it may not be, uh, you know, this may be the effect you're after, but you, you know, you may not like the look. Again, you can bring the opacity down so you make sure that that, that look is softer. Um, another trick here is to go in with your um, new layer mask and work with black, and you can actually mask out some of those showers so maybe you don't want them coming over the top of the lake. Instead of erasing, we're working in a way that we call non-destructive. And I can go in and I can just soften those showers and just put them exactly where I'm looking for them to be. Okay, so this is a really nice little effect that you can achieve. And this brush is called Showers. The next brush we're going to look at is called Sizzling and it's a very it's a brush that creates a radiant burst of light. Again a good option to work on a new layer when you're working with this brush and I'm just going to use my alt key to sample some color here and I want that burst of light to be right in this area here and you, as you can see when I apply it it just radiates out and creates this beautiful, beautiful burst of light. I can control the opacity again by bringing the opacity down or again I can work with composite methods and we'll work with overlay here and then bring the opacity down and you can see that the effect is, is a little more subtle but just beautiful. I love the way uh, this this light is created uh, in this in this piece here. I can go on um, again to uh, you know subtly uh, remove some of these upper rays if I didn't want this to be quite as strong I could you know do a soft erase or uh, definitely work with a new layer mask to remove some of that. But this is a beautiful way of evoking that light burst and that strong feeling of light. The next brush is called Solstice. Again, you can control the direction of this brush by using your particle common panel and setting the direction. Again, I'm going to sample this nice bright orange gold color here. I've set my composite method to, um, to overlay and I'm going to actually work with 100% right now so you can kind of see how this works. When I bring and use this brush, um, you'll notice that um, a lot of times I like to actually start it outside of the actual painting frame. So what I do is I pretty much gauge where I want that light to be coming from and then just start letting it flow in. Maybe I want something over here on well, maybe some light coming through this area here. Again, I can control that with the opacity slider so it's not quite as bright. I can even go in again with my um, working with black and then adding a layer mask. I can go in and softly subdue the effect where needed.
so you can create a beautiful effect that way. That is solstice. The next brush is called Sun and I'm going to sample this nice gold color here and I've set my composite method to overlay and I'm simply going to put firm pressure down on the uh, on the brush and let it flow out to create this circular uh, effect. Nice effect here and let me just back up and show you this. You can use the uh, particle shine on the property bar and you'll get this nice bright shine effect that comes through. And this is especially nice when you're working, um, and let me get the right color here. This is especially a nice effect when you're working on dark backgrounds. So just put firm pressure down and that brush will just flow in and create that look of a sun or a planet even. Put something over here and then bring the opacity down so it's not quite as strong. Most of my radiant light is over in this direction so we'll go ahead and put the brush, uh, put the sun there. The next brush is called Sunset and this is one that I really love. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer and then I'm going to pick some of these nice pink values here and we'll go a little bit brighter with them and you can actually use this brush to paint in the look of a sunset. Lots of nice color here. And again, you know, I may not want uh, all this brush effect going through the main image. So I could add, of course, a layer mask or use a nice soft eraser and I can erase over the effect where I don't want the effect to show. It could also be used for um, you know, distant atmospheric conditions such as mist, haze. I think I'll end up with something like that. The last brush we're going to look at is called Tranquil. And again, this is a brush that will impart light and atmospheric conditions. And I tend to like to use it um, starting again off the canvas and letting it just float off the top like this. Gives a very soft, nice effect. Again, you can control the look with the opacity slider or definitely play with your different composite methods and have fun with screen or overlay, which will give a beautiful effect. So I hope you enjoy these brush brushes as much as I have. Um, they're definitely brushes that I will incorporate into my workflow. I'm having that much fun with them, and I think you'll enjoy them as well. Take care. Thank you.